Well, as we learn more about the deadly attack in New York and the so-called lone wolf suspect, questions are being asked about what can be done to identify, perhaps even prevent these individuals from A, becoming radicalized, and then C, B, being able to recognize it. Uh, joining us now is Zudi Jasser, president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and a former U.S. Navy lieutenant commander. Zudi, thanks for joining the show. It's great to be with you, Charles. Thanks it's, for having it's me. It's great to have you, too, and your expertise. And, you know, you talk about these things all the time. Uh, uh, here, we have, here we are yet once again. Let's talk about the radicalization process. Um, um, I read today, uh, Ian Hersey Ali called it a dawah, what was happening here. Uh, is, is, is that correct? And if it is, could you explain to the audience what it is? Well, I think she's definitely on target. That dawah, which translates into education or conversion program of evangelizing, it's really Islamic evangelism. When Islam is mixed for most of the Islamic establishment globally, it's a theopolitical ideology that believes in a state identity. It mixes being Muslim with being a loyal uh, uh, jihadist as part of the, the citizenship of that Islamic state. If they come here, they're going to bring that with them. Those individuals are not going to assimilate. They're here as an insurgency. They're here as part of the global jihadist insurgency. You can't—we have a Muslim Liberty Project, Charles. We've proven over and over again, youth that are already Islamists, that believe in a global caliphate, are never going to believe in Americanism. They're not going to want to die for America. They want to die for the jihad. We have to work with those like my parents who came here escaping persecution, who embraced American patriotism and believe in universal secular freedoms, not in theocracy. So how do we vet, how do we identify those who can never, who will never uh, assimilate and who are here on their pretenses to ultimately harm us? That is the greatest question, because so far, Charles, all we do is focus on terrorism, violence, extremism. Those are acts. Those are methods. Those are techniques. We have to look at the ideology. We vet them by asking them, can you be critical of the Prophet Muhammad? Can you draw cartoons? Do, you, do they use terms like Islamophobia? Do they look at the West as anti-Islam, or do they embrace secular society? Those may be more political thought, but listen, if somebody's coming from Russia, I don't want autocratic Putin supporters coming here. I don't want Chinese communist dictatorship supporters coming here. So there are a lot of different examples of right. ideologies that are incompatible with Americanism, and theocratic Islam from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan should not be allowed in, and it's easy to vet that. Do you only have about 30 seconds left, but are you concerned that uh, many Americans just blanket all Muslims uh, under the same banner or umbrella when these things happen? Well, for any of us that are concerned about it, the way to change that narrative is for Americans to see us stepping up and reforming the idea so that they see us as a necessary asset. If they see us asleep, they're going to be more fearful, and that's not the answer. If you want to fix right. it, join our reform movement to change that narrative. I agree a thousand percent, and there are a lot of people who know within these families and these units and neighborhoods, and they need to step up immediately. Zudi, thank you very much. Amen.